Hello guys, welcome to Ankit Sunil Wits. Today I'll teach you how to take a perfect history and how to do a perfect examination for breast. So let's start. In first part, we'll learn history taking. As first thing which you have to ask is name of the patient for the identity. Age is very very important here as uh, breast carcinoma generally occur after 40 years of age, rarely before 20 and fibroadenoma generally occur less than 35 years of age. Also. For the investigation purpose also age is very important like if you want to do a radiological imaging for breast. For a young female generally ultrasound USG is preferred because breast tissue is hypertense so therefore malignancy will appear as hypotense like for old women mammography is preferred then we have to ask about occupation if the lady is having any exposure to radiation which can cause breast carcinoma then it's a risk factor we have to ask the education hailing from socioeconomic status as breast carcinoma is common in higher socioeconomic status then we have to ask the chief complaint generally it would be lump or it be pain or be discharge or any retraction of nipple which you have to write with duration and in chronological order next would be your history of presenting illness section generally it'd be a lump then you have to present your history like patient was apparently well these many months back when she noticed a lump in her right breast while taking bath and then you have to elaborate that history of lump what was the onset what is the rate of growth you can say like it was small in the size these many months back and have reached to present size most of the examiner do not like when you compare the size with any uh, things like you know lemon tennis ball and, uh, you have to ask about history about pain generally breast carcinoma lump won't be painful but if it is due to mastitis or any abscess then it would be painful you have to ask about history of any swelling in the opposite breast or uh, in a opposite axilla then uh, if the patient gave history of pain then you have to elaborate the history of pain what is the onset it is unilateral or bilateral what is the duration what is the nature generally it would be a throbbing type of pain if it is a mastitis with pus whether it is radiating aggravating relieving factor related to menstruation relation to my menstruation is very important like when there is a cyclic mastalgia uh, when there is an increased prolactin level from the pituitary so that can result into uh, cyclic pain it could be because of fibroadenosis also the common differential diagnosis for pain in the breast is acute mastitis breast abscess fibroadenosis generally for fibroadenosis pain would be premenstrual cyclic pain and it will aggravate with any movements like you know r while running or jogging or musculoskeletal pain if there is any history of discharge then you have to ask whether it's unilateral or bilateral if it is a unilateral it could be because of uh, breast carcinoma or because of local pathology or a ductal papilloma but if it is a bilateral then it could be a systemic like hyperprolactinemia then if we can elaborate through history whether the discharge from one duct or multiple then it's good or else during the examination you can find out whether the discharge is from one duct or multiple duct if it is from one duct the cause could be ductal papilloma if it is multiple then it could be fibrocystic disease it was the duration nature color order quantity the differential diagnosis if it is bloody then the cause could be ductal papilloma which is from a single duct spontaneous discharge and the treatment is microdotectomy so here are the other causes then retraction of nipple so you have to ask the duration you have to ask the history of uh, ulcer over the lump if it is there then you have to ask the duration progression the in the other history history of trauma is very important especially like if a trauma is a direct blow or a seat belt associated because it can cause hematoma or traumatic fat necrosis which is very important to rule out fever history is important for mastitis abscess uh, generally weight loss do not occur in breast carcinoma only in the late stage of breast carcinoma weight loss can occur or uh, if it is TB breast then it, weight loss can occur history of metastasis generally the cause of death in breast carcinoma is metastasis only metastasis to lung is approx 20% and to bone is 40 to 50% so you have to ask about history of any back pain or pain in bone breast carcinoma metastasis to lumbar vertebra through Batson's plexus which are valveless then uh, if there is any liver damage uh, approx if 80% of liver is damaged then it can present with jaundice 
you have to ask about history of any abdomen pain because of stretching of glycine capsule if it is a metastasis of lung then you have to ask the history of breathlessness cough with hemoptysis breast carcinoma can also metastasize to brain so you have to ask the history of uh, headache vomiting seizure blurring of vision weakness of any limb it can also metastasize to pleura soft tissue or adrenals past history is important of diabetes hypertension or coronary artery disease whether the patient is taking treatment or not this is required if when the patient will go for treatment you have to ask about any past history of similar swelling in the past or in the opposite breast because reoccurrence of tb breast or fibroadenosis any previous history of breast abscess which was uh, treated with antibiotics but there was no incision and drainage done for it so it can present with antibioma now you have to ask about any history of any irradiation to the chest or to the neck in the person history you have to ask about smoking or any alcoholism because these are a risk factor for breast carcinoma diet you have to ask any history of any drug intake especially like hrt uh here i would like to mention that now ocp are considered safe for the breast now most of the re- research study says that ocp do not cause breast carcinoma when the examiner ask you whether ocp is a risk factor or not then you must be updated and must have a reference for that so go through your textbook regarding that the main cause of breast carcinoma is unopposed estrogen exposure so if there is a early menarche and late menopause it will result into breast carcinoma because there is unopposed estrogen exposure early menarche generally it is if it is less than 11 years you have to ask about marital status age at the first child birth if it is late child birth or there is a, a nulli parity then it is also a risk factor for breast carcinoma breast feeding is considered to be uh, as a protective factor against breast carcinoma menopausal status is also important if the breast cancer is er positive estrogen receptor positive and the lady is post menopausal so there uh, aromatase inhibitors are given the another question would be like what are the other risk factor for breast carcinoma you must know the names of uh, breast carcinoma syndromes in family history history of breast and ovarian carcinoma is important because, because of barker gene if there is increased estrogen in the body it will result into a uterine tumor also uh, a detailed family history need to be taken regarding any gastrointestinal or ovarian or uh, any breast malignancy in in two or three generation uh, you can present like 53 year old post menopausal lady presented with a lump in her right breast for past 6 month lump is non painful but progressive in size with no history of any skin changes over the lump no history of any predisposing factor or risk factors for breast carcinoma probably a malignant lump you can say if the examiner wants you to uh tell so generally you must know the what are the features for malignant lump is generally it is a rapid growth patient will be of old age there will be history of weight loss or loss of appetite initially the lump may be painless but now if it becomes painful then it could be a malignant lump now so moving on to examination part first we have to do a general examination where you have to present like patient is comfortable at rest conscious cooperative oriented you have to comment about her build her nourishment based on her bmi we have to look for any signs for chemotherapy like a patient may be already diagnosed with uh, breast carcinoma maybe she is undergoing uh, chemotherapy then look for pale ictus cyanosis clubbing generalized lymphadenopathy or any pedal edema generally the important part is the axillary lymph node examination so this either you can present after the breast examination or else you can uh, present it your, in your general examination in axillary lymph node uh, you have to understand there are three levels with respect to pectoralis uh, the lymph node uh, level which is Uh, medial to uh, pectoralis minor is level 3 behind the pectoralis minor is level 2 and lateral to it is level 1 and these levels are divided into five groups like level 1 will have three groups of lymph node anterior posterior and lateral in the level 1 in the level 2 have only central and level 3 have the apical group of lymph node ultimately all these will drain into subclavian lymphatic trunk 
so to examine the anterior uh, group what you have to remember is if you are examining the right axilla of the patient you have to use your left hand for the examination patient hand should be resting on your examining hand and you have to palpate the lymph node with the pulp of your finger against the anterior axillary fold this is something called rotor's node this node is bit present between pectoris major and minor to examine central group first you have to lift the patient arm place your arm in the right axilla and then you tell the patient to adduct the arm uh, make sure not to poke the patient palpate with the pulp of your finger for the right axilla use your left hand for the left axilla use your right hand for apical group you have to use the same technique the only thing is you have to push finger little further upward the other group is lateral group which is also known as brachial group you have to palpate this group against the shaft of humerus in between the two axillary folds for the right axilla of the patient use your right hand here you have to palpate with the same hand for the examination of posterior group you have to stand on the back of the patient for the examination of the right axilla of the patient you have to use the right hand only then palpate the lymph node along the posterior axillary fold between the thumb and the fingers supraclavicular lymph node is very very important for the palpation of supraclavicular lymph node you have to stand on the back of the patient if you find any lymph adenopathy then you have to describe it you have to describe it with six characters location size and number whether they are tender or non tender matted or non matted mobile or fixed what is the consistency generally if it is a carcinoma it would be hard it would be a soft in case of any infection or you know inflammatory causes there axillary nodes with or without fixity are considered significant so it's very important to know this if there are multiple lymph node in uh, one group so there you can present like uh, three uh, lymph node palpable in the anterior axillary group where the largest being size of 2 by 3 or 2 by 2 then you have to present the vitals like bp pulse respiratory temperature spo2 other system examination you have to do cvs then rs rs especially you have to look for any lung metastases there or any pulmonary tb or any pleural effusion is there then you have to uh, do a abdomen examination especially for free fluid or any organomegaly or any pelvic tumor or because there could be liver metastases or krukenberg tumor where bilateral ovary metastases is uh, uh, the local examination in the local examination first is the inspection so the first one is arm by the side of the body and the patient will be in sitting position this is the first and important position where you have to do inspection uh, here you have to talk about breast about its size shape symmetry position whether any lump is seen or not the common viva question which will be asked is the what are the boundaries of breast and if any lump is seen in the breast during the inspection then you have to tell uh, in which quadrant you saw the lump what is the extent what is the size what is the shape what is the surface what is the margin what is the condition of skin over the swelling here a small note regarding the breast quadrants generally the breast carcinoma is most common in the upper outer quadrant which is uh, generally approx 50 to 60% of chances are there for breast carcinoma there is a concept of multicentricity and multifocality in multicentricity there will be multiple tumor in different quadrant and for this breast cancer it is surgery would be contraindicated for this condition but if it is a multifocality where multiple tumors are there but it in the same quadrant then next what you have to talk about is about the skin over the breast whether there are any dilated veins whether there is any dimpling or puckering or a retraction or any pore orange or any nodule ulceration or fungation why about uh, prominent veins over the breast is it could be because of uh, any growing sarcoma or any phylo tumor the most common question of the examiner is the difference between dimpling puckering pore orange or any satellite nodules dimpling generally occurs because of involvement of cooper's ligament and cooper's ligament only gives support and contour to the breast traumatic fat necrosis or any abscess or any malignant and see which is involving cooper's ligament that can cause dimpling and dimpling is also known as tethering also 
the only importance is if dimpling is present then it won't change the stage puckering occurs when skin is pulled inward due to like fat necrosis or any decrease in mass it could be there because of FNAC or surgery also. Puckering also do not change the stage. Only this the orange and satellite nodules will change the stage of fresh carcinoma. the orange occurs because of obstruction of intradermal lymphatic drainage by cancer cells. It occurs at the site of hair. the orange is there. It means there is a metastasis to the skin. Satellite nodules means there is a radial spread through the lymphatic ducts and the prognosis is worse. So if any ulcer is present on inspection, you would have to describe about number, position, extent, size, shape, margin, floor. If any skin involvement in breast carcinoma, then the stage would be T4B. Inflammatory breast carcinoma which occur uh, in 1% of cases which is a kind of uh, locally advanced breast carcinoma here the erythema would be more than one third or would be more than 30% of the breast area it would be common in lactating and pregnant women pode orange will be there it will be tender and inflamed and the staging would be T4D and the most common differential diagnosis would be bacterial mastitis. Then you have to talk about nipple, level of nipple, any retraction or any deviation, what is the position, number, size, shape, discharge, ulceration. In nipple look for 6Ds. 6Ds are discharge, destruction, depression, discoloration, displacement and deviation. For displacement how you look for is uh, you can measure the distance from mid clavicular point till the nipple. Also you can measure the distance between the nipple and the midline. That distance also you can measure and compare and then you can tell about the displacement. The most common causes for retraction of nipple are carcinoma of breast, chronic mastitis, or it could be a congenital a retraction of nipple or chronic disease like TB. Next, you have to comment about areola, what is the color, what is the size, whether it is some diminution of sizes there, its surface, whether there are any crack, fissure, eczema or any discharge. Generally, hypertrophy of glands of Montgomery is there in pregnancy and lactation you have to look at arms and thorax whether there is any brownie edema which could be there because of lymphatic block by lymph node or there are any nodules which could be like cancer nodule you have to look in axilla whether there is any fullness or any nodes are there you have to also look for supraclavicular fullness then the next position of inspection is arms raised above the head where you have to look for any fullness in axilla you have to look at inframammary space generally by raising the arms above the head retraction of nipple and pode orange will become more prominent generally inspection on leaning forward is done uh, when the lump is visible in sitting position if the lump is not visible in the sitting position then no need to do an inspection on leaning forward there you have to look for the fixity of mass to the chest wall if both the breast fall equally on both the side then the mass is not fixed to the chest wall next is inspection on contracting and relaxing pectoris major yeah, you can tell the patient to keep her hand on the hip and then contract so the anterior axillary fold becomes taut. Then you can uh, see whether the lump become prominent or not or any dimpling becomes more obvious or not. Next position is a supine position. Ideally a 45 degree semi recumbent position is good. Here you can look at the inferior quadrant of the breast very nicely. Next section is palpation. In palpation, you have to look for a local warmth and tenderness that you can check by palpating through the dorsal aspect of the fingers in all the quadrant and compare with the normal breast. If there is any local warmth and tenderness, then the cause could be abscess or in any inflammatory carcinoma of breast. Here, you have to examine the breast. This could be done in sitting or supine position. Generally, supine position is preferred. A pillow could be used to keep under her chest. So the breast spread equally on a rib. You have to palpate with the palmar surface of your fingers. You can palpate uh, systematically in the radially outward direction from starting from the uh, areola. So, uh, remember first you have to palpate the normal breast but while presenting you can tell the affected side first. In the breast palpation remember you have to palpate the glandular area. Do not miss the axillary tail. 
in inspection also do not miss the axillary tail uh, then palpate about the areola area also palpate the nipple also uh, while palpating you must look if there is any discharge from the nipple if any ulcer was seen in the inspection then on the palpation you have to uh, talk about its size shape margin floor any discharge surrounding areas tenderness base of ulcer and its mobility if any lump is palpated then you have to talk about and local warmth and tenderness over the lump what is the number what is the site size shape what is the margin well defined or ill defined what is the consistency soft or firm or hard if it is a breast carcinoma generally it be hard mostly what is the surface globular or irregular or bosselated or smooth or uneven uneven would be there in case of carcinoma if the consistency is cystic then you have to do a fluctuation and trans illumination test over the swelling then you have to check the plane and the mobility of the lump first you have to check whether it is fixed to the skin or not for that you have to just pinch the skin above the swelling if the skin above the lump is pinchable it means it is not fixed to the skin if the skin cannot be pinched it means it is fixed to the skin then you have to look at the intrinsic mobility generally fibroadenoma will be like mobile from one quadrant to another quadrant it would be uh, mobile independent of the breast tissue that's why it is also known as breast mouse breast carcinoma will move along the breast tissue the fixity to the breast tissue can be checked by keeping one hand over the breast tissue and fix it with the other hand move the breast lump if by moving the breast lump the breast tissue also move it means it is fixed to the breast tissue the first sign of any malignant lump is the loss of mobility so mobility is very very important but there are like benign swellings uh, without intrinsic mobility are like fat necrosis or a big fibroadenoma a uh, fibroadenoma is considered to be a big or giant when it is more than 5 cm then you have to check whether it is uh, fixed to the muscle first we have to uh, look for uh, fixity to pectoralis major you have to remember that pectoralis major is not a part of chest wall as it, uh, it is thick and do not spread to the chest wall like serratus anterior serratus anterior is a part of chest wall so how you have to check for fixity to uh, pectoris major is you have to tell the patient to keep her hand on hip and make the anterior axillary fold taut if the lump is attached to pectoris major then it won't move along the pectoris major fiber but yeah some slight mobility may be there at the right angle if the lump is attached to pectoris major then it won't change the staging and the treatment for that is remove the affected part with tumor that's all but if the lump is attached to serratus anterior then the staging of breast carcinoma will change as serratus anterior is considered to be part of chest wall you have to look for uh, fixity to serratus anterior only if the swelling is there in the lower outer quadrant of the breast here you can tell the patient to push the examiner's shoulder or to push against a wall then you have to move the mass along the fibers of serratus anterior if the lump is fixed to the serratus anterior muscle uh, the mobility along the fibers of serratus anterior muscle won't be there fixity to the chest wall means it is totally immobile and it is fixed irrespective of the contraction of any muscle the chest wall consists of only three things ribs intercostal muscle and serratus anterior muscle and if there is any fixity to chest wall it means the stage is t4a then the next is nipple examination where you have to look for any tumor just below the nipple there could be any mass you have to press the nipple and also look for any discharge if there is any nipple retraction then you have to press gently from side uh, deep to the nipple if it averts then the cause could be congenital or spontaneous if it, it do not avert then the cause could be breast carcinoma there could be question by examiner how you will demonstrate tethering tethering could be demonstrated by uh, moving the lump from side to side and observe for any dimpling appearing at the extreme of the movement or else uh, you can tell the patient to lift her hand about the dimpling will become more prominent a demonstration of podi orange is done by squeezing a segment of skin over the breast which will show lymphedema in the skin with the prominent hair follicle then you have to examination for metastasis a palpation of the spine need to be done and long bone and especially of skull if there is any pain 
at the spine then a bony metastasis could be considered a per rectum examination or a per vaginum examination is also important to find out any metastatic deposit in pouch of douglas in case of uh, krukenberg tumor next is percussion percussion over sternum and second and third intercostal space is very very important as approx 75% of lymphatics uh, of the breast drain through the axilla rest 20% of the drainage is into the internal mammary lymph node if the percussion come as dull then metastasis to internal mammary no lymph nodes could be considered do not forget to examine and mention the opposite normal breast or axilla and also supraclavicular force of the patient it's very very important uh, you must know uh, what is the difference between malignant breast mass and a benign breast mass in your diagnosis mostly if the case would be of breast carcinoma you have to tell which side it is left side or right side or it is bilateral uh, write the tnm staging and the final staging also it's very very important and drawing the diagram is very very important there you have to draw the diagram of the breast and with the axilla also uh, a diagnosis would be like this is a case of right sided breast carcinoma staging t2 n1 m0 stage 2 the most common viva question is what are the other differential diagnosis for breast carcinoma the most common is traumatic fat necrosis remember clinically and with the help of mammograph also you cannot differentiate between breast carcinoma and traumatic fat necrosis only biopsy can differentiate traumatic fat necrosis is very very rare very very rare okay the other cause are chronic breast abscess soft tissue sarcoma antibioma or joint fibroadenoma so here i would like to discuss some important scenarios so like if there is a lump in both the breast so there you have to stage both the lump and you have to write the treatment for higher stage tumor and for the treatment purposes we have to do a histology if in the histology both the tumor comes as identical it means it is a metastasis it is a distant metastasis from one breast to another if it both come different then it, it means the both the lump are different and we have to stage them differently in the second scenario if there is more than one lump means if there is a two or more than two lump in the same breast then what we can do is there we have to always stage the bigger lump and write the treatment for maximum stage lump condition if there is a breast carcinoma for example in the right side but lymph nodes are enlarged on the left side so there first you have to look for any lump in the left breast if there is no tumor then we have to consider it as distant metastasis distant metastasis could be there because of internal or an cutaneous lymphatic so here are some other factors or other diagnosis which you should not miss and you should always keep in your mind other than breast cancer first one is phyllo tumor like uh, the tumor would be massive in size mostly after 40 years it grows very very fast there would be dilated veins over the tumor skin would be stretched and shiny unevenly bosselated surface it will be mobile on chest wall there will be no fixity no axillary metastasis would be there and the treatment is generally excision with one centimeter of margin the most common uh, question examiners would be asking the difference between pages disease and eczema a local eczema or a dermatitis remember pages disease is always unilateral and there will be no lump found it will totally destroy the nipple there will be no itching mostly occur at menopause and and it is an interductal carcinoma in, involving excretory ducts where a local eczema or dermatitis will be mostly will have a bilateral eczema and it will be itching it will be common during lactation and the nipple would be totally intact there will be no lump uh, tb breast where it be a there will be a benign lump there will be lymph nodes would be present and there will be history of weight loss patient may have multiple sinuses or you know abscess over the breast diagnosis is done generally by biopsy and the treatment is only anti tubercular drugs for breast abscess it be tense and tender it be warm to touch there be history of trauma fever or diabetes or a steroid or any immune compromise also and the treatment is incision and drainage the important difference uh, you must know between breast carcinoma fibroadenoma and fibroadenosis so here are some must know things for your viva so I hope this video helped you guys. Thank you guys for watching this video. For more videos, do subscribe. See you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.